Hi guys, I'm back. Welcome back this evening. Hey, I'm about to show you how quick and easy it is to make something like a beautiful tart in your Thermomix and have it ready within the hour. Well, within about 40 minutes really. So come along. I'd love to show you how to do this this afternoon. And for those of you who don't know me, my name's Lisa Keegan and I love to come every day to you live to help you get more out of your Thermomix. So please do say hi if you're watching along. If you're stumbling along me for the first time, please do reach out if I can help you in any way, either get a Thermomix or get more from your Thermomix. So let's Let's get started straight away. The first thing we're making is pastry. Pastry is so, actually the first thing we're making, making is grated cheese. Then we're making pastry. So I love that you don't have to wash the bowl out between these steps. Let's, let me show you how to grate some Parmesan cheese. So I'm just gonna tear my scales back. It says 100 grams of Parmesan cheese. I might have a little bit more. We'll just see. I've got 140. I'm gonna grate a lot of it because it'll come in handy. I'll just put it in the container in the fridge. Someone will use it. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to click on next, insert the lid. 10 seconds, speed 10. Let's do this. Grated cheese, here we come. All right. Transfer to a bowl and set aside. This is going to sprinkle on the top of it. A bit like we do on quiche Lorraine, which is another favorite of mine to make because it's so quick and so tasty. How good is this grated cheese? Check this out. This does not get old. I tell you, no matter how long I have a Thermomix for, powdering cheese is one of my favorite things to do. All right, how cool is that? I'm gonna put that aside. And then we're gonna put in 200 grams of plain flour. Now I am gonna do gluten-free plain flour. So if you are gluten-free, this is for you. But a little tip, use a little less than the recipe calls for. So I'm gonna aim for 180, not 200 on my gluten-free. I've got two packets to work from because I don't think this one's going to have enough. So this is the first brand I'm using. This is my favorite brand. I find it's quite consistent. Oh, maybe I will have close to enough. No, not quite. So I want to aim for about 180 grams. This is my other brand I will use. I don't find it's great all the time. For some reason it changes occasionally. Oh no, hang on, this is a Woolworths one. Woolworths one is okay. It's all right, sorry. There's another brand we sometimes use in the packaging, in soft packaging like that, and it's it can sometimes have too much tapioca in it, which makes your food a bit slimy. It kind of doesn't work the same way in your pancakes and stuff. You end up with more like little rubbery pancakes. So this Woolworths, A-okay. All right, next. I don't know who bought the Woolworths stuff. Normally we don't get ours from Woolworths. 100 grams of unsalted butter cooled and diced so you don't want it to be room temperature because otherwise it's going to make a soggy pastry pastry does not love things being uh, warm it does like cold often you'll see me use ice cubes in pastry um and uh, yeah love making pastry i couldn't cook pastry or make pastry more so before i had a thermomix there's no way no way i could do this but the thermomix makes it possible and it makes it possible to make it gluten free without costing the earth as well 100 grams of that I've got to keep the butter out though. The butter will be used again later. By the way, not dairy free. Sorry if you're dairy free. That pastry, you can't make it dairy free. Um, or you could actually give it a go with a bit of coconut oil. But with having then the cheese later and there's cream later, it's kind of not going to work. Hey, Carissa, lovely to have you on again. Okay, some salt. If you've had salted butter, then don't put the salt in. But if you had unsalted butter, then we put that salt in. So I'm just grabbing my little salt thing, a pinch of salt. In that goes, and on with the lid. Now, a lot of you guys know I often say use, use veggie stock in place of salt, not in pastry. Okay, not in pastry. Alrighty, insert the lid. 10 seconds, speed eight. Let's bring this together. It's gonna to be beautiful. <laughs> You can hear it coming together at the end. You can hear it forming a little ball in there. Now it's got 50 grams of milk. Have a look at what's going on in there. It's a bit like a breadcrumb mix, but that's not going to make a good pastry yet. It won't bind well. So I'm going to put that back on. Bring up our scales. Now 50 grams is not much. It's about two and a half tablespoons. So go easy on your, your pouring. And you guys know me. I normally just slap happy. So I am oh, still nine grams over. Oh well, it's all right. It's very forgiving with Thermomix, but it is pastries and breads that I say try and be a little bit particular. But anyway, oh, hang on. Let me done. Back to here. 
lids locked in one second and it says turn speed selector to speed sorry turn speed selector two to four times until it just clings together so it's got turbo up one second the arms locked in so when you're on turbo it locks in you have to hit the home key later or the next button to un unlock them we need to do this two or four times two to four times one two you can hear it coming together three we'll do one more because that covers all bases tip out wrap and cling for film and chill i'm not going to do that you guys know me i don't roll with that chilling things so we're going to grab our baking paper we're going to turn this straight away onto see look at that how cool is that we have dough oh i couldn't imagine life doing this without a thermomix could you so let's put this on the mat on the what's this called baking paper and we're going to just push it out between the two layers you guys have seen me do this before with many of the things but for those of you who are brand new watching let me show you how easy it is to do this just chasing one bit of dough out from under the blades there it is so don't worry about cleaning out your bowl it doesn't matter if there's a bit of dough in your mix in a minute because your base is going to be dough so it doesn't really matter if it kind of cross contaminates it it's not really contaminating it's just adding to it all right so normally if you felt like it you could give it the half an hour rest I don't feel like it so and secretly I want to get my kids to bed early tonight I'm just pushing it together into kind of a kind of a ball there's no point starting with like an Australia shape because you'll end up with an Australia shape when you roll it out so if you can get it to semi ball it will then come out and and be nice and circular shaped second sheet of baking paper and you won't believe it I found the roller after we got off camera before it was in the dishwasher of course it was in the dishwasher anyway now we just use this is a silicon roller I think they come from big W and those sorts of places they normally are fondant rollers they have little elastics on the end to make you roll your fondant evenly so just take them off and it's lightweight I love it and so all I'm doing here just shift the camera around so you can see is I'm just gonna roll it out well push it out sorry push it out I'm pushing it out into a circle it's not enough space in this little bench area can I clear space down here these are my drained artichoke hearts and I'll just make some space I might just wiggle things around just a little bit push it back into the corner there excuse the messy bench all right let's do this much better oh except you're seeing my stomach let's do that instead there we go all right around we go so I'm pushing it around in a circle and I'm not going to take the top off it. If I take the top off, it's all too tacky. You're just going to lose the top off it, even if you're not gluten-free and you've got normal gluten flour. And just push it around in a circle. The more circular it is, the easier it is to fit in your tart container or whatever you're using. You could do this in a like a springform tin or a cake tin, an upright cake tin. There's no reason why you couldn't. And the baking paper is the secret to making great pastry. Okay, keeping it between that baking paper until it's par cooked. So, the only thing you need to be mindful of with having baking paper is to make sure it doesn't touch the element in your oven and catch on fire. If it does catch on fire, don't open the oven door. Let it stay closed until it goes out, which it will go out because it'll run out of fuel. Just experience, okay? I've done it. So, I'm talking from experience here. All right, so I'm just pushing that around and making kind of a, a circle till I'm pretty happy with it that it's fairly even. Now, I might be able to get the top off this, actually. It's not too sticky. I tend to give it a par cook in the oven first, but let me just grab my tray. This has got a removable base on it. doesn't have to have, though, because you're going to leave the baking paper under it. Well, I am, because otherwise everything sticks in my world. So I'm just putting that on top. Give it a little push down lift the sides so that they can have the chance to drop down into the tray now you could trim the edges off i actually don't i like to leave it higher so that if i've got more filling it can go up higher so i'll just push this down make sure it's kind of centered now my top layer is actually coming off fairly easily i didn't think it would so should i put that extra milk in look at this now the recipe tells you to fill it with baking beans and cook it for 10 minutes take off the paper and then cook it a bit longer 
I told you I'm making this speedy for you guys. So guess what? Take this off. And then, now you could even get away with cooking the base. Do you remember with our quiche Lorraine, we don't cook the base? So we could even get away with that. But you've got about five to ten minutes anyway while you get your next step done. So you might as well put that in the oven and get that just slightly cooked. Won't be fully cooked, but just slightly. So if you're cooking along at home, feel free to do that. So the ones, the little bits that sometimes I cut off are the tops that are sticking up, but today I'll just fold them down out the way. I only cut them off so they don't catch on fire in the oven. Okay. So if you want to par cook it, par cook it at this point in time, I'm just going to leave it there. It's beautiful. Who needs to chill it when you can do that? How good's that? All right, let's keep going with the recipe. So tell you this is going to be amazing. I'm so excited. All right. Transfer pastry to a loose bottom tart tin. Chill for 20 minutes. No. Preheat oven. Line the pastry, pastry case. Tells you to cook it with the thing. Brush it with egg. I'm not going to brush it with the egg. Uh, kind of seems like a bit of a waste of egg to brush it with egg. And bake a bit longer. I suppose I might crisp it up and brown it. But I don't really mind. My family don't mind. Like the quiche Lorraine, they never complain that it wasn't cooked beforehand. They're crust. So... We'll just roll with this. Okay, 100 grams of onions. Brown onions cut into quarters. And I'm not familiar with this recipe. I've never made it before, so I was going to follow it to a T with the exception of the pastry part. Okay, I've got 179. That'll do. All right, butter. 30 grams of unsalted butter, diced. If you don't want to do butter, maybe you put your butter away, maybe you've run out, some oil would certainly do in this step. Okay. So excited. This one, I think I mentioned earlier, for those of you watching earlier with the dip and crackers, if you like the bark baked artichoke dip, I reckon you're going to love this dip, uh, this tart, because that dip is phenomenal. Uh, and I would never have tried it. I don't like artichokes. Well, I don't think I do. I've never eaten them before. But hey, in that dip, phenomenal. So I'm, I've got high expectations of them in a tart as well. Two garlic cloves. I'm still using garlic, minced garlic at the moment, cheating with that. So I'm just going to roll with that. Two teaspoons of that. So excited. This is going to cook off so yummy. Did that. Okay, on with our lid. So now it's going to chop and it's going to cook. So three seconds, speed five to chop. Okay, next. With the measuring cup still in place. Now I would normally show you the chop. I'll show you the chop. Hopefully the onions don't get me. See the chop? Oh, there's a piece of butter caught up the side, but that'll melt fairly soon. So it's not a really fine chop. It's not like so fine that it's pulverized. It's more like a what you'd expect chopping it on a chopping board. So that's cool. Cook off steps here, time to prep your next ingredients. So we go up to our little three dots. We go recipe details. We scroll down and we go, what do we need out next? So it says 100 grams of frozen spinach. I got the real deal. We're rocking with that today. So just use what you've got. Or you know what? Skip it. It might actually be the thing that my kids don't want to eat is the green in it. So I'm hoping it kind of dissolves down into it. Two medium eggs. So you want to crack those. And then it says two yolks. I'm not doing two yolks. I'm going to do a whole nother egg. So I'm going to use three eggs in total and not do two yolks. Some double cream. Now normally you'd see me use coconut cream. We actually have some leftover cream in the fridge. So I'm going to use the, the cream cream today. It's not double, it's just ordinary boring thickened cream. Then it says some salt and pepper. And then 480 gram um, jar of artichoke hearts. So you've got to drain those. And that's what I've got up the back here, draining in my simmering basket. I've actually got two jars that were about 230 a jar. So yeah, I didn't didn't make it particularly right. I just drained my two jars and that'll do. And then some olives. Now if you don't like olives, skip them. Don't stop this recipe because you don't like olives. Maybe you want to replace with sun-dried tomato strips or maybe you do nothing. So don't feel like you've got to do the olives. Now, what else does it say? It gives you a few more in information, a bit more information down the bottom. So 24 seconds left. That little time then, that snippet there, gives you enough time to prep everything else so that by the time we're putting it in the oven, our kitchen is clean. This is the beauty of Thermomix cooking, is that by the time we finish the recipe, there's nothing left to do. I love it. By the way, I'd love to know if anyone in the chat has done this recipe before. 
I never have. Seven and a half years owning a Femimix. First time today on live with you guys. How cool is that? Okay, 100 grams of frozen spinach. So that's melted down. Just going to stand back a bit so the onion fumes don't get me. I'm going to see if I can fit 100 grams in there. Spinach is always one of those things that's hard to kind of fit in the space required. Oh, I should get it in there. There we go, 100 grams. Oh, the onion fumes coming to get me. Whew. Okay, two medium eggs. I'm just moving away. What I'm going to do before I put the eggs in, oh my goodness, the onion fumes. All right, I'm going to push the home key and I'm going to blitz that spinach down because frozen spinach is normally, I need to open the door. I need some fresh air in here and wipe my eyes off camera. Okay, frozen spinach is normally more compact. It's, it's melted down. It's wilted, wilted down, right? So let's spin it up to speed five for a second and let it give it a bit of a chop in with that beautiful cooked onion. or semi-cooked onion, apparently, since it's still got my eyes. It's 90 degrees, so it'll wilt it'll be packed down in there. I've given that about five, six seconds. I can hear that it's nice and smooth now. I can hear that, it, well, not smooth, smooth, but it's, it's chopped down consistently. Let me show you. That's better. Check that out. So you don't need to buy frozen spinach. Use what you've got. Okay, back to the recipe. Two medium eggs. This is where I'm putting in my three whole eggs. Okay, in they go. So there's the yolks from the medium eggs. Okay, 250 grams of double cream. Using thickened cream and it goes. Oh my goodness, the onion fumes, they're terrible. I think it's probably made worse by the fact that the heating's on, so I reckon that's not letting any fresh air in. Okay, 250. You could use coconut cream, yogurt, I reckon it'd work as well. It's a fair bit of cream. Hope Mr. with the sore the funny tummy from dairy does alright with this tonight. Sorry, he might not even eat it. We'll see how we go. Hoping to serve it with salad. So salad or some and some steamed broccoli on the side will be the plan. Okay, some parmesan, 60 grams of the parmesan. It's only a little bit of it, it's not all of it. You'll still have 40 grams left for the top of it. So in that goes. Oh, it's gonna be so yummy. Oops, 65, oh well. Some salt, don't go too heavy on the salt. Parmesan is salty by nature. Okay, so don't go too heavy. Oh, one teaspoon. You could actually probably put your veggie stocks and your veggie stock in at this point if you want. So put in like a, a heaped teaspoon of veggie stock. But I don't have it out. So we'll just follow. And you know, first I follow your recipe. So let's maybe not go too far off script. Some pepper. And on with the lid. This is the last step. How good is this? Oh, except we got to add the artichokes and the olives on top. So nearly last step. Five seconds, speed three. It's mixing it through. Next. No, we don't mix the artichokes through. We actually place them in there. That's cool. All right, let's do this. Pour the pastry, the mixture into the pastry casing. There's the pastry casing that's raw. It's not yet cooked. Can you please grab them out? Thank you, love. Those um, crack the protein crackers are just made. They're out of the oven. So pour the mixture into the pastry case. Let's do this. You guys can see that. Oh, am I going to have too much? No, I will fit it in. Okay. Not sure if I'll be able to fit the, the um, artichokes on top though, but anyway, let's give it a go. Then we place the large artichokes hearts drained in halves into two con concentral circles. Oh my goodness. So I guess we're doing a bit of this. So, oh, that one went there. Just going round and round and round with these. I really don't know what the kids will think of this, but anyway, that's okay. They can always just have salad. I think the big boys will eat it. Just not sure about the little people. Always the way though. Has anyone else got picky eaters at home that don't have everybody eating the food all the time? Or am I the only one who has that challenge around here? So I'm just slotting these into the spare spots that I can find. Ooh, that side's about to overflow, nearly at capacity. Oh, and the onions made my eyes and my nose water. One of the benefits of getting a Thermomix is you don't normally get teary from the onions. Uh, just if you're stuck in a closed pantry doing a Facebook Live, apparently. 
Okay, nearly done. I'm just about squeezed all this in. It's just about to ooze over in certain places. I'm going to have to be really careful putting it in the oven. Can I do any more? That's it. All right, we've just made it. It hasn't oozed out the side. And now we need to put some olives on top. I might just do half a side of olives. Actually, I might just spread them out a bit further only because I do know that half of my family will not eat it for the olives. So I will actually just go really light on the olives so they can have the strips that don't have olives on. Mm. I need to, excuse me for one second, everybody. I need to go strain the olives because this is the very end of the jar and I can't get them out. So two secs. I'm back. It was literally the bottom of the jar. All right, so I'm just going to go easy on the olives. I won't put too many in. I'll keep them wide apart so that they, I can kind of do slices for the little people that do or don't have olives on. Just putting them around the edges. But as I said, if you're not an olive lover, leave them off. It looks very pretty. All right, now I think we need parmesan, 40 grams of parmesan on the top. And I'm hoping I can get this to the oven without it overflowing. So you probably need higher sides than I do, although I did have twice as much onion as I probably called for. I'm just going to put a bit more of that on. I did have that generous amount of onion on there. I think I had about 120 grams. Just grab a towel. Um, I think I had 120 grams, 180 grams rather than 100 grams of onion. So that might have enlarged my capacity as well. But there you go. Now what we do is we cook it for 30 to 35 minutes at 200 degrees and then serve it. How yummy does that look? Robin certainly thinks so. Thanks for coming past and saying hi, Robin. She said it looks really good. I think it will taste really good. Um, artichokes have a really beautiful baked flavor. That baked artichoke dip, if you've not tried it, try it. I think I tried it for the first time early last year, pre-COVID, and I was just blown away. I came home and made it quite a few times for the family. So please give it a go. Don't write it off because it's artichokes and you're like, what if? Give it a go. I think you really enjoy this. I will let you guys know later. I'll take photos and I'll let you know what we think. But otherwise, guys, take care. I will come live to you over the weekend and show you the crackers I didn't get to share from this week with you guys and the dip. But have a fantastic weekend. Let me know if I can help you or your friends and family with getting a Thermomix on the bench. There is a fantastic offer on at the moment. So no matter where you live in Australia, when you're getting a Thermomix at the moment, there is a fantastic second bowl offer. This doesn't come around every day. Uh, it rarely comes around. I wish I could get a bowl for $99 for my Thermomix. So if I can help a friend, a family, a loved one get a Thermomix on their bench and then inspire them to get the very most out of it, I would be absolutely uh, delighted to. So by all means, pass my details to anyone. Pass them my page details, my YouTube, those sorts of things because that's what I'm passionate about. I love seeing homes transformed by what the Thermomix can do so that you can whip up things like this in so such a short time like it's been 20 minutes on live but really it's not i mean if you're doing it in your own home without talking to a camera you'd be done in 10 minutes how cool is that so take care and i look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow uh back here for some more cooking so take care and i'll see you tomorrow bye for now there's the mouse there's the mouse